Let's go back to the phone lines. Talk to Scott in White Rock, British Columbia, Canada, listening on KARI. Hi, Scott. Hi, Hank. Yeah, I saw you. Uh, I, I've been listening to you for about 30 years now. I want you to talk about um, uh, music and how how that we can get distracted as Christians about from if we because there's a lot of music out there that's quite sensual. People can get distracted where there is a line of demarcation where where music can become sensual instead of instead of you know instead of focusing on God. Like every time a person puts a Christian musician puts music uh, ly- uh, lyrics scriptures to music. There's something very powerful about that. Well, I think that's absolutely right. And uh, you know what we're told is that we experience genuine worship through a passion for praise. So what we win by prayer, and we're just talking about prayer and spiritual warfare, we have to wear with praise. And that's why the Apostle Paul urges us to sing to one another with psalms, with hymns, and with spiritual songs. You see that in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. So, Uh, If you sing a psalm, or you take the Bible and you put it to music, it's a magnificent means for intercession, for instruction, and even for the internalization of Scripture. So it has great, great value and merit. And then you have the great hymns of the faith, which has stood the test of time and are rich in theological tradition and truth. And Paul also mentions spiritual songs, and they communicate the freshness of our faith. Now, it is crucial that we preserve both a respect for our spiritual heritage and a regard for contemporary compositions. But we have to be wary of nonsensical repetition or musical mantras, which are given to us in a culture that is not steeped in either history or, or scripture, and therefore they're historic, historically and biblically illiterate. And so you have uh, choruses that tend to reflect the values of the popular culture, and uh, those values include instant gratification, intellectual impatience, ahistorical immediacy, incessant, incessant novelty. Oh, my goodness. And they lack intellectual rigor, and they fail to offer a mature exposition of biblical doctrines. So I'm very wary of contemporary music. I don't listen to it uncritically. Uh, I listen to the lyrics critically and think, are those lyrics in harmony with a biblical worldview? And my goodness, how many lyrics today are not at all commensurate with biblical theology, or even with the history of the church? Hank, what I'd like to say is, I, I, I love playing the harmonica and blues, but I, th- I think it's awesome because blues, is, it, its roots are in Negro spirituals, and I really believe, like we're talking about prayer and stuff like that, I believe that you can exercise uh, depression by, by, like, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's not my joy, but His joy. Yeah, it's just wonderful. It's uh, absolutely wonderful to take good, solid music. And, you know, it's the balm of Gilead in uh, my life uh, in, in, in many occasions as I go through suffering or through sickness. Uh, that music is absolutely incredibly salving to the wound. And talking about people that are dying. I mean, it's, uh, I mean we're talking about hospice and palliative stuff. I mean, it, music brings great, 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 great comfort to those that are passing away. Yes, exactly. 